Hello everyone and welcome to this Blender Rigging Tutorial. I'm Andrew Lewis and today we'll be creating a basic rig for a quadrupedal character. This four part series will focus on building a rig for a quadruped, starting with the forward kinematics rig, converting it into an inverse kinematics rig, and then setting up basic face rig for some shape keys. This first part will focus on the forward kinematics rig. So first, what are quadrupeds? Quadrupeds are basically any animal that moves on four legs. Some examples are dogs, horses, and elephants. There are also other creatures that can fall into this category. The character Umbreon, who I will be using as an example rig in this tutorial, is also a quadruped. Some dragons may fall into this category, but not all. As with dragons, some dinosaurs also qualify as quadrupeds. So to put simple, if your character is walking on four legs, it's probably a quadruped. So what is rigging? Rigging is essentially creating a digital skeleton that can be used to deform a mesh in your character. In this tutorial, we will focus on three kinds of rigs. The forward kinematics rig, which is the most basic and is very robotic in movement. With this type of rig, you can only pose bones individually, which is very time consuming and again is very robotic. The inverse kinematics rig is a bit more complex than the forward kinematics rig, but allows users to pose bones using a bone hierarchy. This rig can be used to create a more natural movement in a character, and is also less time consuming as all the bones move in a chain together. Finally, there's the spleen inverse kinematics. This is essentially having a chain of bones follow a curve. This is very useful for rigging things such as tails, tentacles, or long ears. So to sum it up, this four-part series will teach you how to add bones, create an IK rig and a spleen IK from a forward kinematics rig, add shape keys, weight painting, and create custom bone shapes for your character. So let's get started with the forward kinematics rig. First, we will need to open up Blender. This tutorial uses Blender 2.71. If you do not have the latest version, you can download it at blender.org. I recommend you use the latest version for, of Blender for this tutorial, as there have been many changes to the user interface. At this time, you can load your character into Blender. For this tutorial, I'm using an Umbreon I created using Blender 2.69. Before we begin rigging our character, though, I will be enabling two add-ons. First, I will be enabling the Screencast Keys add-on, which will enable you to see which keys I am pressing as the tutorial goes on. One thing to note, though, about this add-on, as Screencast support was recently dropped from Blender and probably will not be in later builds. Second, I will be enabling the 3D Navigation add-on. This is not required, but helps especially for those who are using a laptop that does not have a number pad. What this does is it creates a new tab that can be accessed by pressing T on your keyboard. By clicking the directions on the 3D view menu, I can cycle through each view just as if I was using a number pad. So I'm going to set my left viewport to right orthographic and the right viewport to front orthographic. For adding bones or modeling in general, there's no rule to which view you can use, just use whichever you're more comfortable with. Now before we add any bones, we want to make sure that the 3D cursor is centered. You can do that by pressing the center tab on the 3D navigation menu. It can also be done by pressing shift C on your keyboard. In this version of Blender, there are three ways to add bones in the viewport. The first way is to go into the Create tab, which is located under the Tool tab when you press T on your keyboard. Then click on the Armature tab. The second way is to go to the Add button located in the bottom header. From there, a menu will pop up and you can go to Armature and select Single Bone. The third option is to have your cursor anywhere in the viewport and type Shift A. This will bring up a similar menu to the last option where you can select the armature. Using one of these three, let's add in the armature. You can then enable X-ray view in the object settings so that you can see your bone through the mesh. First, let's rotate our bone by pressing R. You can then rotate it freely. 
A more controlled rotation can be done by holding down control while rotating. This will limit it to increments of 5 degrees. I'm going to move the bone to an area around the pelvis. Then click on the tip of the bone and just move it to the other end of the body. Make sure you're in edit mode before you do this, otherwise it will just move the entire armature as opposed to just the tip. Right now it's not really helpful to have one bone control this large of an area. So we can separate it into multiple bones by clicking W and going to subdivide. I'm going to subdivide twice, which gives me four bones. As I only want three for now, I'm going to delete the first bone in the chain. Now in edit mode, I'm going to bring the pelvis up a bit in the rear where it's closer to the tail. The front one will be brought up about where I want the neck to start. So for the neck, I'm going to press E to extrude while selecting the tip and bring it about where I want to add in the head bone. Then E again to extrude the head bone. I don't want to bring it straight up to the ears because it would cause problems further on if I tried to pose it. Bringing it to an area around the forehead should give it a bit more natural rotation once the mesh is parented to the armature. So now we have our chain of bones that goes from the pelvis up to the head. At this point, you can fine-tune your bone setup before moving on to the legs. So for the legs, I'm going to select the middle bone in the armature. Since it was not rotated and is at 90 degrees, I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Shift-D. Now you'll notice a line coming out of our new bone. That indicates that there is a bone that it is parented to. To get rid of that, you need to press Alt-P clear parent. Now the bone is separate from the rest of the armature. For my model, I'm going to scale it down and place it just where I want my leg bones. Then I'm going to pull the tip just a bit back. By switching to perspective, you can see where the bone is inside the mesh. Now let's repeat the process as before by duplicating that middle bone. This will be the first bone in the chain for the legs. If you don't want to duplicate the bone, you can always use the Add menu and add in another bone. Make sure you're in edit mode or Blender will just create a new armature. For this type of character, I do not want the bone to go straight down. So I'm going to shift the tip to the left a little bit. Now I'm going to extrude it and bring the extruded bone down to the thick part of the wireframe, which is a simple joint that I made using three close loops. Now let's extrude again down to another joint. This part is not exact. Depending on the design of your character, you may choose in to add more bones, but for something that is similar to a dog or cat, three bones should work just fine. For the foot or paw, we're going to extrude once more and bring it down near the toes. We do not want it to be flat, so we want it at a bit of an angle. Finally, I'm going to extrude once more, which will serve as the middle toe. If you don't want toes in your character, that's fine. This setup should give you a nice leg and foot to work with. But if you do, we can just duplicate the foot and toe bone.
With the duplicates, you can then slide them to their respective positions and scale down the duplicate foot bone a bit so it is inside the mesh. For the duplicate foot bones, I'm going to go into Bone Settings and uncheck Deform. This is because when the mesh is parented, I only want them to serve as pivot points for the toes. Finally, we need to parent the duplicate foot bones to the actual foot. Right now, they are parented to the leg. So select one of the duplicates and then the foot bone and press Ctrl P. Then select Keep Offset. If you press Connected, the bones will shift to where they are connected to the parent and that will just mess up our current rig. Now on to the right foot. It took a while to make the first leg, and we don't want to take up all that time making a second leg, let alone trying to get it to line up with the first. So there is a quick way around that. Select all the bones for the first leg setup and press Shift D. That will give us a duplicate of the leg. Now press S to scale and then X to lock it on the X axis. Then scale it to negative one. Your duplicate leg is now a mirror of the first. Now you can slide it on the X axis into position. You may notice that limiting the increments with the control key is not helping to get it aligned perfectly and eyeballing it isn't exact either. Here's the way around that. Make sure your cursor is centered and then click on the Pivot Center tab next to the Viewport Shading. Select 3D Cursor. Now if I scale negatively along the x-axis, it will create an exact mirror of the first leg. Now that we have our two front legs, we can now move on to the back legs. I'm going to take those two bones in the front and duplicate them so I can create copies near the pelvis area. Remember to go back to medium point for the pivot center or it will remain on the 3D cursor. Before we make the back legs, let's also give these four bones some parents. Select one of them and then select a bone in the head pelvis chain and press Ctrl P to parent it. Remember to keep the offset for these bones. Just as with the front leg, I'm going to duplicate that middle bone and place it into position. Just as before, I'm extruding it to the joints I created in my mesh earlier. Since I have the same number of bones in my back leg as the front, I can also just duplicate the front bones and place them in the back. So let's delete the back legs and duplicate the front ones. This is another way you can save time on making a rig. If you don't need to make something completely new, just duplicate what you've already made. Now with the duplicate, all we really need to do is just maneuver each bone into the correct position on the leg. Now when you're duplicating bones, the bone roll may get messed up a bit which can have disastrous effects on your mesh when it is deformed. For most bones, you can see if they are not aligned in orthographics view. If you can see more than one side of the bone, it's probably messed up. To fix this, press Ctrl N and select one of the bone roll options on the global axis. In past releases, typically the Z axis would fix this, but in newer releases, it is not always the case. If you are unsure of whether or not your bone roll is off, there is one sure way to find out. You can change your bones to B-Bone in the armature options. To get a better view, in edit mode, you can press Ctrl-Alt-S to make the bones thinner. Now click on the bone icon to bring up more bone options. Under the segments, it's currently set to 1. Let's scale it up. What this does is it separates the bone into virtual segments. We don't want that for this rig, but it can also be used to find out bone roll issues. If the bone roll is off, the segments will be severely twisted. As you can see with this chain, 
They are very nice and straight, so there are no issues with this rig. Since we don't want the, se the virtual segments, let's scale them back down to 1. Now on to the tail. For the tail, I'm going to select the pelvis bone and duplicate it. Once the first tailbone is in place, we can then extrude each segment towards the tip. Alternatively, just as in the beginning, we can simply subdivide the bone into smaller segments. I'm going to keep it at two subdivisions. Now I want to parent the tail to the pelvis bone. Since this will eventually be given a spleen eye case setup, I'm going to give the tailbone some segments. Not much. I'm going to have two in the front, four in the middle two bones, and two for the tip, as I want more bending in the middle. Before moving on to the ear, I'm going to duplicate the legs and scale them to the right side, just as with the front legs. Now for the ear. I'm going to duplicate the center bone as before and move it to the head. From there, I'm going to use the right and front views to place it inside the ear. Now I'm going to subdivide it into four bones. Now let's parent the lowest ear bone to the head bone. Remember to keep the offset. Because of the way the bone is oriented, when I subdivided it, the bottom bone was parented to the ones above it. So when I try to parent the bone to the head, it breaks the chain. So let's go back and rotate that ear. This happened because of the way I rotated the bone, so it may not happen to you. Once it's all fixed, we can fix the bone roll as well as parent it to the head bone. You can also duplicate and scale the ear bones to the opposite side just as with the feet. Again, make sure that the 3D cursor is centered and the pivot center is set to the 3D cursor. Once you do that, you will need to check and fix any bone roll problems in the duplicate ears. While you're at it, if your character has eyes, you can select each eye individually and then the armature by holding down the shift key. Go into pose mode and select the head bone. Your eye should still be selected when you're in pose mode. If it is, you can then press control P and select the parent to bone option. Now if I move the head, the eyes follow with it. Lastly, I'm going to do one more bone roll check to see if I missed anything. So this time, just go over your model and see if there are any errors you missed as well. Once you're done checking, you now have a basic forward kinematics rig for your quadrupedal character. That's pretty much it for this portion of the tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. In the next video, we will be converting this forward kinematics rig into a basic inverse kinematics rig setup.